In this video we're going to look at some of the properties of the modulus of a complex number and how we would prove these properties. First one we'll look at any complex number the modulus has to be greater than or equal to zero and equality happens if and only if we've got the complex number zero. So how do we prove this fact? Well, as always, we'll look at z being the complex number x plus i, y. The definition of the modulus is the square root of x squared plus y squared. Now, that's a positive square root. So, the problem here is, what about 0 equaling 0? So, let's do this both ways. Suppose the modulus is equal to 0. In other words, suppose that the square root of x squared plus y squared is equal to 0. Now, x and y are real numbers. So the only way that x squared plus y squared is going to be equal to zero is if x and y are both zero. If they're non if one of them is non zero, then this quantity will be positive. If they're both non zero, the quantity will be positive. So modulus complex number 0 would imply that the real part 0 and the imaginary part 0, which means that we're looking at the complex number 0. And vice versa, if we have the complex number 0 with the real part 0 and imaginary part 0, then by definition it's modulus will be the square root of the real part squared plus the imaginary part squared. We get the square root of zero, which is zero. So it works both ways. So if and only if we have zero, will the modulus be zero itself. So that's the first um, property of modulus. And that was the proof. So let's move on to the second property. Second property is that the modulus of the conjugate is identical to the modulus of the number. Also, the modulus of the negative of a complex number is identical to the modulus of the complex number. Now, these two properties were proved in video 7, which dealt with some of the properties of modulus. We introduced the modulus in video 7. So these two have already been proved. You look back at that video if you're not sure about this one. We come now to a very, very important uh, property of the modulus. The modulus of a complex number squared is identical to the product of the complex number and its conjugate. Well, to see that, let's just take any complex number x plus i, y, and we'll look at z times its conjugate. That would be x plus i, y, times x minus i, y. Remember the conjugate, the imaginary part, is just the negative. Uh, changes sign. So let's look at this product. The real part be x times x is x squared. The last two terms, i squared, negative i squared, y squared, negative i squared, y squared. And remember, i squared is negative 1, so negative negative is positive 1 times y squared. So we're plus y squared. And the outside terms and inside terms, because this is a difference of squares pattern, they dis disappear. So the imaginary part of this product is zero. 
So we end up with the real number x squared plus y squared, which we know is the modulus of z without the square root sign, so it's the modulus of z squared. So that's the proof of this very important fact. The modulus of a complex number squared is identical to the real number you get when you multiply the complex number by its conjugate. Let's have a look at the fourth property. The conjugate of the difference of two complex numbers, z1 and z2, is the same as their difference if we swap it around. Now, this fact will follow immediately from this, this second part of, of property 2, that uh, the modulus of a complex number and its negative are exactly the same, because z2 minus z1 is the negative of z1 minus z2. If we look at negative z2 minus z1, get rid of the brackets there, we've got negative z2 plus z1. That's positive z1 and negative z2. So we can write that as positive z1, negative z2, z1 minus z2. So the negative of z2 minus z1 is exactly the same as z1 minus z2. So their two moduli will be identical. So that's the proof. It follows from the second property here in property 2. Now, last part, or the fifth property of modulus. If we have a product z1, z2, and we look at the modulus of that, then we'll discover it's the product of the two individual complex numbers. So this requires a little bit of thought. Now the way we're going to prove this property is by using property 3. So we're going to say let's look at the product of z1 and z2 and its modulus, but let's look at it squared first of all and use this property and see what happens. Now this property says that you will get the modulus of this complex number z1, z2 squared by multiplying z1, z2 by its conjugate. Now we know from properties of conjugates, which we, we dealt with in video 4, we know that the conjugate of the product of two complex numbers is the product of their conjugates. So the conjugate of z1, z2 will be the conjugate of z1 times the conjugate of z2. Now also in video 5, we looked at the fact that multiplication and addition of complex numbers had the structure, the algebraic structure of a field. It meant that addition and multiplication had com the commutative properties uh, and associative properties. Now, this product, here's four complex numbers multiplied together. We can change the order of that multiplication. We can group them in any way we want. That's because multiplication is commutative and associative. So we can rearrange this product of four complex numbers and group Z1 with its conjugate and group Z2 with its conjugate. And we know, again from property 3, that a, a complex number times its conjugate is the modulus of that complex number squared. And here's z2 multiplied uh, with its conjugate. That will be the modulus of the complex number z2 squared. Now, the fact that we've got this quantity squared being equal to this quantity quantity squared, if we take the square roots of these two equal things, positive square roots, 
uh, we will get Z1, Z2 modulus being equal to Z1, Z2 without the squares because we're taking square roots. This only works because all quantities here are positive. We're allowed to do that. And that, therefore, gives us property 5. Now, having seen that, I think you could probably attempt yourself to prove that Z1 divided by Z2 would be equal to, well, the modulus of Z1 divided by Z2 would be equal to the modulus of Z1 divided by the modulus of Z2. It's very similar to the proof that I did for the product at property 5. So stop the video, see if you can try that. Okay, so how did you get on with that? Let's see if we can attempt the proof of that one. So again, we'll look at not just the straightforward modulus, we'll square it. And we know that that is the same by property 3 or as this complex number Z1 divided by Z2 times its conjugate. And again, if you look back at the video on conjugates that we did, video 4, uh, you'll remember that we proved that the conjugate of the division of two complex numbers is just the same as the division of the two conjugates. And by the property of multiplication of these two complex fractions, we would multiply the top two, Z1 times its conjugate, and the bottom two, Z2 times its conjugate. And we know that Z1 times its conjugate is identical to the modulus of that complex number squared. Bottom line, Z2 times its conjugate is exactly the same as the modulus of the complex number squared. And this quantity squared equals this squared over this squared. Take positive square roots. We would end up with the modulus of Z1 over Z2 being equal to the modulus of Z1 over the modulus of Z2. Again, only true because all quantities are positive. And we must have a caveat at the end of this that says Z2 does not equal zero. Remember, we're not allowed to divide by zero. And because of property one, the only time uh, this modulus is equal to zero is if we're dealing with Z2 being 0. So that covers the non-defined case.